only way that you can enter into heaven is to repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. I cling completely and solely on the finished work of Jesus Christ. That God is willing to save, that God is willing to condescend, that God is willing to, to lay down his life, that Jesus Christ is willing to lay down his life so that you may have eternal life, so that you would be escape the wrath of God, so that you would, would be a recipient of the kingdom of God, so that you would be a child of the living God. Nothing in my hands I bring. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. I cling completely and solely on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Is that you today? Amen. God bless you, sir. Have a good day. Are you clinging on to Christ for your salvation? Are you clinging on to the blood of Christ, the righteousness of Christ? Or are you clinging on to your own dead works? Are you clinging on to your works of righteousness that cannot satisfy the wrath of God? That cannot satisfy the justice of God? Don't you, don't you understand? God cannot be bribed by your good works. You can't bribe God by your good deeds. Your acts of, your acts of giving to charity. You know why? Because every good work you do is flowing out of a heart of sin. Every good work you do is, is, is tainted with your sin. It's tainted by original sin, and it's tainted by your sin, and God cannot accept sin. God cannot tolerate sin. Despite what the world says, the world may say, God loves sin. That's a, hair, that's a lie straight from the pit of hell. A lot of people say, love is love. I love you, you love me. Love uh, affirms my sin. People think that love is affirming my sin is agreeing with my sin. No, my friends, that is not what love is. The Bible says that love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not arrogant, it is not, it is not haughty. It does not insist on its own way. But guess what, get this, get this. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. Somebody who, who loves their sin and they say love is love, what they're doing is that they've made a, a, a fake God in their, in, in their imagination. They made a God in their imagination that affirmed their sin. God bless you, sir. They made a God in their imagination that excuses their sinful lifestyle. What they've done is that they made a God that looks like them, that acts like them, that walks like them, that talks like them, that loves the same sins like, as them. What they've done is they've essentially tried to usurp God and make themselves their own God. My friends, don't delude yourself. Stop deluding yourself into thinking that God is going to pat you on the back because of your sin. My friends, God hates sin. My friends, God proved that he hated sin so much that he crushed his only begotten son on the cross. Jesus Christ was crushed, sir. Yes, Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago. Newsflash, sir. Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross. He was bruised. He was crushed. And that shows you how much God hates your sin. But also, my friends, the, the, the opposite is this. It shows you how much God loves to save sinners. That God is willing to save. That God is willing to condescend. That God is willing to, to lay down his life. That Jesus Christ is willing to lay down his life so that you may have eternal life. So that you would be escape the wrath of God. So that you would, would be a recipient of the kingdom of God. So that you would be a child of the living God. This, my friends, is the greatest news that you can ever hear. This is the greatest news in the entire universe. That Jesus Christ bled and died for sins. And that he rose again from the dead. And that right now God is calling all men. God right now has flung open the gates. God has flung open. He has hurled the gates open. And he says, everybody who has ears to hear, come to Jesus Christ. 
and you are going to recognize that you are in desperate need of a savior. You are going to realize that you are bankrupt, absolutely bankrupt before the judgment seat of God, and that you are in desperate need of the righteousness and the salvation that comes from Jesus Christ. That is what it means to humble yourself. But some of you, my friends, you don't have ears to hear. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean when it says you don't have ears to hear? It means, my friends, that the God of this world has blinded your mind in order to get you to see the light of the, go the, of the gospel, which is the glory of Christ. The God of this world has blinded your mind. And you see, the God of this world, Satan, he uses many tactics to blind you. Did you know that? Yeah. Satan uses yeah. many tactics to blind you, to get you from seeking Christ, to get you from being saved. And he'll make you think that, you know what, I have, I have 10 years to live, 20 more years to live, I have 30 more years to live. You know, I'm young, I'm very healthy, I'm strong. You know, I, I feel good. My friends, you have no idea. You could die tomorrow. You could die on your way home today. Hey, good stuff, boss. God bless you guys. Have a good day. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. See, my friends, you could die on your way home. You could wake up with a brain aneurysm, my friends. There's many ways you could die. And yet, my friends, what the devil's trying to tell you, he's saying this. He, this, this is what the devil's telling most of you. Everything's okay. Go, go to sleep. Go to sleep. That's what Satan is telling you. That's what Satan is telling you. Every single day, Satan is, is saying, it's okay, don't worry. It's okay. You don't need Christ. Keep chasing after the world. Keep chasing after sex. Keep chasing after money, after the works of the flesh. Keep lusting after the world. Keep ignoring Christ. Keep procrastinating your salvation until the day that you die and end up in hell. Where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. My friends, you need to wake up today. You need to turn from your sins and believe in the gospel. Jesus Christ makes it very clear. He says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to God the Father but, but through me. That means that the only way that you can get to the Father, the only way that you can enter into heaven is through the Son of God. How do you do that today? I pray that you've already done that. I pray that you're already a saved. I pray that you're already a blood-bought ch child of God. But I can't see your heart. Only God sees your heart. All I do is spread the seed. God gives the increase. So I pray that you would hear the, heed the words of God, that you would turn from your sins, that you would look to the Savior, the Savior of sinners who died on the cross. See, my friend, that is what it's all about. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The fact that Jesus Christ would bleed the fact that Jesus Christ would expire for three to six hours on a cross. The fact that Jesus Christ would be slaughtered. The fact that Jesus Christ would spill his precious blood so that you can be saved. God bless you, sir. Will you repent of your sins and believe in the gospel right now? Will you turn from your sins? Will you stop living a lie? Will you stop living for things that you know are worthless? Stop it, my friend, stop! And think for a moment, where am I going to spend an eternity when I die? In heaven! God bless you. Heaven. Amen. Heaven. Because of what? Because of what? God! Because what? Of Jesus. Because Christ I saved us from I our sins. He paid the price. Amen. Because Jesus Christ saved us from our sins, He paid the price by dying on that cross. See, that is the only hope, my friends. I pray that you would believe that message, and I pray that you would turn from your sins and believe in the gospel. May God bless you, and have a great day.